Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how we can handle multiple architectures in the same database in IDA. Now I'm going to be using a less known technique and also that mechanism is not really meant for this kind of things. But if we are creative, we can use it to render some shell code from different architectures. I'm going to be starting with an x86 program and inside it I have RISC V and ARM V8 shell code and we're gonna nicely leverage capstone to disassemble and render nicely in ida and we'll be able to add some comments and so on of course you can take it multiple steps further and enhance it and make it much better but for now this serves as a good introduction with that let's get started all right so what i'm gonna be demonstrating is the feature in ida and the sdk called custom data types and custom formats this is a feature that's now 14 years old back in 2010 and in fact i did blog about it back then and the demo here in the blog was to convert the byte stream just an arbitrary virtual machine I created for demonstration purposes where we will convert those byte streams into whatever you deem as representation that fits your needs for example maybe simple decoding disassembling and as well you can be as creative as you want you can have stateful decoding and so on but for now these are not encrypted and they are independent from each other in real life, let's say if you're working with some kind of uh, commercial virtualization software, bytecodes are not necessarily just fixed size or unrelated to each other. They get decrypted as the decoding happens, for example. So you can still implement that logic. But for today, I'm going to be using regular RISC-V and ARM. So as usual, we have to go to the SDK and take a look at this. So as well, this is not fully documented. There is only one example in the C++ SDK and one example in the Python code. So we can start with introducing a custom data type. And that data type is something beyond the built-in types like the by D words, Q, Q word, and so on. So we will define a data type structure and then we will register it into IDA. So we will define the type name, just a unique name, the menu name as well, if we want to have a hotkey just to directly apply that custom data type and the type size. So if our custom type, let's say is five bytes, we can just put five here. But if our type is variable size, we have to implement calc item size where we can tell either kernel that we're going to give you the size based on the past effective address. So we get the EA and then we do our decoding or whatever we need to determine that instance of that custom type, how big it is. Then after we have the data type introduced, then we need a way to represent it. And then that's where the data format comes into play. So the custom data types and the data format are related. Now we can have one without the other. We can have data format without a custom data type. For example, for built-in types, maybe we want to represent them in any way we like. Then we simply implement data format for the custom types. And when we implement the format, we'll have to give the format name because as I said, a type can have multiple format representations. So one type, then the format we might have, let's say represented as representation Representation 1, representation 2, so we have a unique name here, hotkey, value size, and just some callbacks as well. The most important callback for us right now is going to be the print, which will be responsible for rendering on the screen. We'll have to populate the output argument. We will receive the bytes under the cursor. And then if we need the size as well, we can use it based on what calc item size or if it was a fixed size from the data type. There are other callbacks like scan and analyze that will allow us to have more advanced integration, for example, creating cross references, or if we want to go and patch things like go the other way around, we will implement the scan, for example. All right, after we introduce those to the type and the format, then we simply first have to register the data type. We will get data type ID, and then we will register the format as well. And when we do that now, Ida will know about those two and how they're related. We will have the same facilities in Python. And so I'm going to be using Python for this introduction. So Python, as usual, will have as well the corresponding register type, unregister type, and register format, unregister format, and we can see them as well. 
they are in the swig file we simply rename some of them and then we have some of the implementation and wrappers to have those now python takes it one step further with respect to convenience and gives us a single function call register types and formats which takes a list of tuples the tuples have to have a certain format if i show you the source code we'll see we have that list of tuples and the first thing in the tuple should be the data type and then series of formats we can have different formats presentation for the same data type then the next tuple as well will have the data type and then the format and if there are more as well we just add more 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 and we can have one without the other as i said so as well this function register data types can allow us to simply have just the format for example and if we do that then we can just have a representation without a data type this is handy for built-in types now Unfortunately, this is broken, it doesn't work, so for now we'll have to have the type and the format. We could not just add a new format for existing data types with DTID 0. Maybe in the future it will be fixed, but for now we're just going to use in demo two implementations. So what I have here is a proof of concept C code and i have in the resources some shell code that is arm and if you look at the code which is a basic fibonacci implementation in arm i assembled it and extracted just the bytes out of it and i'm gonna be doing the same as well for risk 5 and then i compiled it into the program and here i simply let's say find resource load resource get the size and the pointer to it now in real life this could be coming from anywhere doesn't have to be in the resources but as long as you have them visible in ida somewhere in an address in ida you should be able to right click and change the representation from series of bytes to something else so continuing in that c program real quick i retrieve both risk 5 and arm code and then suppose i have something like to emulate it for example and this does nothing but just serves to show me the addresses that i'm gonna look up into either and that's the main as well really just the proof of concept code nothing important once i build that program here this is the program and we have like run those two when i run this it will give me the addresses i noted the addresses so i have arm code at this address and I also noted the size when I run the program the program will spit those information as I said so I noted those two bookmarks with respect where is the arm code and how big and where's the risk and how big it is now let's look at the code and see how we can fully implement that representation so because I'm not gonna implement a disassembler and these are common architectures I will use capstone and so how to use capstone is out of scope but basically you just install capstone import it I'm gonna create an instance of an arm disassembler and an instance of a risk 5 disassembler and then I start by subclassing the data type and I introduce an arm v8 data type here and give it the unique name and uh, since uh, arm v8 instruction size are uh, four bytes as well i'm making lots of assumptions here I'm not talking about different modes and so on so we're just gonna take the four byte here and all the regular arguments for it so this is the prefix that will show in the disassembly we'll see where this comes into play this will be the menu name as well associated data format so the data type if it has a fixed size this is the most important thing and just those descriptors if it was variable size we will have to implement the calculate size callback then now that we introduce the type we will have to render so that's where the data format comes into play and i override the print now as usual the print method of course we have to rename it since it's a reserved keyword so in the c++ it's print and in python is gonna just be printf it will receive the same and to render it i just have to return a string and i'm using the capstone disassembly call and disassemble and return a colored string and i'm coloring the instruction with the import color and the operands with the instruction color as well you can be as creative you can break down different operand colors and so on here i'm just keeping it simple and the same story goes for risk 5 
just copy paste essentially and changed it and then i just introduced that table as i discussed earlier and do the single core to register data types as well this is a demo this is not for production if we want to do production code we'll have to wrap the register inside the plugin initialization and the unregister in the plugin termination but here i'm just using this for quick iterative programming so if i rerun the script it will unregister and then re-register the stuff so this is the code now let's see it in action so back to our database let me run that script as well in production this should be a plugin it should have been already registered and everything so the types and formats already registered for now let's just invoke it by hand okay here this is coming from ida python internals so we just display that we registered a new data type and it got dtid1 and a single format has been associated with this data type so we just have one format same for risk one new data type and one format we can have multiple formats associated with the data type now that these are available now so i'm going to invoke the bookmarks here if we know where that foreign code is or different architecture is we just have to have that information so i bookmarked it and here i have two c bytes arm v8 from this point on so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna right click and now this is what i have I have ARMv8 and RISC5. And I know in this case, this is ARMv8. So I'm going to apply a single instruction here. And now it renders. So move X10. If we verify here as well, we can see it here. Move X10. Now I know the size is 2C hex. So what I'm going to do is use the array command to do a batch operation of the same like right click and apply that type so i could right click for each one of them or simply make the first element here press star to make array and it's gonna be 2c over four elements but created individually and that will do this batch command applying that custom data format on top of this so now here i have it rendered and can see individual addresses per instruction because i broke the array if i create it as an array they'll all have the single address now because they have individual addresses what i can do for example i can add comments for example and we can if we implemented other callbacks we can have cross references and so on but basically this is cool and here as well this is coming from capstone and here because we are calling capstone giving it the effective addresses from ida we have that nice addressing that maps in ida as well and uh, same story for risk 5 here same story right click create the first one here here the size is 34 hex so as well i'm gonna make an array see this as well don't make it an array and here we have it now i have risk 5 and you see these prefixes these are the prefixes here and the codes we can change it we can make them look anyhow we like and so this is really really handy now not only we have x86 we also have any other architecture we want so now with this hopefully you can be creative and create something more useful than that all right so that's it for today we learned how to use custom data types and formats to solve a problem in a creative manner we learned how to add multi-architecture support of course to some degree and render it nicely now before i go i'd like to thank my ex-colleague igor skoshinsky for his excellent support at hex race all right thank you and i'll see you next time